naming acids. So we've talked about ionic compounds, we've talked about molecular compounds. The last group we're going to learn to name are the acids. Um, acids are molecular compounds that form ions when you put them in water. And because they are not ionic compounds, we, we name them differently. We can identify um, acids from their formulas because hydrogen is the first element in the formula. So you're going to see hydrogen and then one or more nonmetals after that. We're not going to see any um, acids that have metals in them. We can group acids into binary acids and oxy acids. So a binary acid, binary two. two, two elements, hydrogen and something else. And then we've got oxy acids. Guess what the oxy acids have in them? Oxygen. They're going to have hydrogen, a nonmetal, and oxygen. So to name them, we have to identify first what they are. So the binary, only two elements, the oxy acids contain oxygen. I have a bit of an issue with this description because there is one acid that gets named as a binary acid even though it has three elements in it. And so I have a problem with that. I prefer to think of the oxy acids or the ones with oxygen and this group is the other ones, the ones without oxygen. Let's look at the binary acids first. So these are hydrogen and a nonmetal. And so their names take this, this form. We take the base name of the nonmetal. We change its, the ending to ic. So chlorine would become chloric. Nitrogen would become nitric, that sort of thing. And then we have the word acid at the end. Before this base name, we have the prefix hydro for hydrogen. So HCl, hydrochloric acid. Two elements, hydrogen and chlorine. We take chlorine, change the ending to ic, put hydro in front of it, hydrochloric acid. HBr, hydro bromic acid. Now there's a very subtle difference here between HCl with an AQ and HCl with a G in parentheses. AQ means it's dissolved in water. When you put HCl in water it forms ions and is an acid. If you have HCl all by itself it's not an acid, it's a binary molecular compound. So I tell you about that, we're not going to get hung up on it in Chem 20. They do hang up on that in Chem 1. So what's the name of this guy? I mean the answer's right there, but don't look at it. Well we've got two elements, right? Don't be disturbed that there's two hydrogens. You still have two elements, hydrogen and sulfur. It's still binary. Yeah, so you change sulfur to sulfuric, it's hydrosulfuric acid, hydrosulfuric acid. Now, see, the UR from sulfur stayed. Why? I can't give you a good answer. English is full of things like this, so why shouldn't chemistry be full of it? Hydrosulfuric acid. So let's name this guy, HF. Hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Because it's hydrogen and fluorine. Fluorine becomes fluoric, hydrofluoric acid. How about this guy? Hydroselenic acid. SE is selenium. Now, selenium is very close to that line, but it is a nonmetal. Hydro. Okay, yeah. Hydroselenic acid, why is it H2? Well, 
Acids form ions when you put them in water. They, they ionize. If selenium is an ion, what is its charge? Negative 2. And if hydrogen is a cation, what charge would it have? What group is he in? Plus 1. See, hydrogen here is, is breaking the rules. He can form a positive ion and a negative ion, right? So he's over there in the periodic table. He can make an H+. plus. We'd need two of those to balance this, and so that's why it's H2. And that's why the sulfuric, hydrosulfuric acid had two hydrogens, because sulfur also forms a negative 2 ion. Any questions? Then there are the oxy acids. The oxy acids contain oxy anions. So HNO3, cover up the H. What do you have left there? The NO3, that's the nitrate ion. Here's H2SO3, cover up the H's. SO3 is the polyatomic oxy anion sulfite. Sorry, I lost my pointer. This has sulfate. We recognize it as an acid because it starts with H, but it's got oxygen in it. It's an oxy acid. We're going to use a different uh, system. And just like we looked at with the hydrosalinic acid, the number of hydrogens here depends on the charge of the oxyanion. This is a minus 2 charge. It needs two hydrogens. This one's minus 2. It needs two hydrogens. Nitrate has a minus one charge, and so it only needs one hydrogen. They are not ionic compounds, but when you put them in water, they become ions. Well, the, the sulfur, the nit in nitric acid here, the nitrogen and the three oxygens, that's one of those bundle packs from Costco. It comes as a unit. Why? For mysterious reasons. There are reasons, but we're not going to figure them out right now. We just say, well, that's the way they come. And SO3, sulfur and oxygen, you can get it as an SO3, or you can get it as an SO4. They have the same charge. Why? Because. So contains oxygen, it's an oxy acid. We're going to take the name of the oxy anion is going to be the basis for this name. So if it has ite, we can't read this. We've got some of those anions that end in ite and some end in ate, right? If it ends in ite, we change ite to us and stick the word acid on there. If it ends in 8, we change the 8 to ick and put acid on there. Um, well, this is as good a place as any to write this. So, yeah, so here's how you remember that. Rick ate him before he could bite us. This is... Um, just a memory aid. There are other, I don't want to put it over there. There are other ways to do this. There's something about a white mouse, but it before he could bite us. Yeah, that's spelled wrong, but get over it. So, what we have to remember is that the ick and eight suffixes go together. And the it and us suffixes go together. So if we look at this table, here we have HNO2. We cover up the H and we say, what is the name of NO2? Well, NO2 is nitrite. We look it up in the table before we've got it memorized. Nitrite. We change it to us. So nitrite becomes nitrous acid. It's like we're swapping out a part. 
HNO3, cover up the H. NO3, that's nitrate. Change eight to ic, nitric acid. See the pattern? Um, by the way, there's a mistake in the uh, table in the book. They put a two here, so I exit out. There's no two there. It's H C two H three O two. This H is written separately from the other H's for a reason. We cover up the H and we look at what's left. C two H three O two. We look that up in the table. It's this guy. That's acetate. We change eight to ic. It becomes acetic acid. Yes. Oops. So if we have HClO4, we cover up the H and we say, oh, well, that's perchlorate. I'm going to change the 8 to ic. So I'll just write this out perchlorate. So I'm going to take that part off, and this is going to be perchloric acid. So we're swapping the prefix. It becomes us, it becomes ic, and then put the word acid at the end. No. If you put hydro in front, that means it's a binary acid and there's no oxygen involved. So let's name this guy HNO2. Well, this has NO2. What's the name of NO2 with a charge on it? Nitrite. It's the light version of nitrate. So I change it to what? Rick ate, Ick ate him before he could bite us, ite us. This is ite, I change it to us. So nitric, I'm sorry, nitrite becomes nitrous acid. Oh, and we did that one. Um, so let's do a different one. Does it have oxygen in it? No, it's not an oxy acid. That's the one that falls into the binary acid category, even though it's got three elements. Let's do this one. HClO. Well, cover up the H. What's ClO? That's hypochlorite, right? Hypo. All right. So how do we name that as an acid? Us. Hypochlorous acid. Now remember that bromine and iodine behave like their sisters, chlor their sister chlorine. And so they're not on that polyatomic ion chart but you can figure out what they do by looking at what chlorine does. So there's an overall flow chart for naming stuff. You may or may not find that helpful. And then they give you an example of using the flow chart. I'm not real big on that, but if it helps. <laughs>